Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to back WordPress up and move it over to a server the manual way. Uh, I do have a little bit of a disclaimer here because uh, this is gonna be a little bit harder than the previous video. So hopefully you've watched the previous video where I showed you guys how to do this with a plugin and hopefully you've tried that method and everything worked out. Um, this method uh, is nice to know if you guys wanna continue with the video and learn how to do it, that's awesome. Um, but it is also something that's, uh, I'd say it's almost a little bit of a last resort. When you can't use any other plugin, try this method. Uh, because there is a problem with URLs at the end where you have to run some SQL queries. So you're gonna need to know or have a little bit of knowledge with uh, something like SQL and you're gonna have to uh, at least be competent um, with moving files and stuff. You're, you're gonna need to know a little bit more. It is a little bit more advanced. So uh, let's take a look at how to back WordPress up. So I've got um, the website open here in my browser, but I don't actually need to have the website open. What I wanna do is grab all of the website files. Uh, so let me jump back over to Finder and you can see I've got all of my files open. Uh, by the way, I just want to <laughs> throw away that zip file. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because I tried making this tutorial a couple minutes ago and that zip file is, well, part of my practice when I was practicing what to say for this video, basically. Uh, so now that I've got uh, my files on my computer open, uh, I want to zip all of these files. I don't need to zip uh, that that zipped file there already. By the way, why is this not? Hello? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't wanna select that zip file, but I'll select uh, everything else. And what I wanna do is uh, compress or zip all of these files. Uh, so that's gonna run my little compressor. Um, and once that's done, I should now have all of my files in a zip file. And I'm going to just uh, uh, rename this to WP backup tuts and um, well, this is now uh, all of my files backed up in a zip file and I want to copy this and paste it on, uh, on the desktop. By the way, it pasted on the other screen so I'm gonna have to just move that over here where you can see it. Uh, but there we go, I've got WordPress backed up for this tutorial. Uh, now what I need to do is back up the database because the files alone are pretty much useless. I need the database for WordPress to actually work. Uh, so let me show you guys how to make a backup of the database. Uh, you could uh, go over to MySQL uh, or PHP MyAdmin this way by going to your web start page and then clicking on um, the MySQL link over here and that'll take you through to phpMyAdmin. But what I like to do, because um, I don't like to work in this little window, is uh, go over to the uh, URL and I'll go to localhost and then I'll type in the uh, address of phpMyAdmin and that'll take me to the phpMyAdmin screen where I've now got phpMyAdmin open in the entire browser, it's not just stuck in that little window. And then I've got my database over here, and this is the database that I set up uh, in the first tutorial when I showed you guys how to install WordPress, or I think it was the second tutorial. Um, so what I need to do now is back up this database. Uh, now there, uh, just make sure when you are backing up the database that you're clicked on the database itself. If you click on one of these tables and you hit export, you're only gonna export one table that's gonna be annoying because, well, it's not the entire database. So make sure you're clicked on the actual database like this and the entire database is selected and you can see all of the database tables. Then hit export. And uh, if I hit custom and hit go, sometimes it doesn't always save the file as an SQL file. Uh, or sorry, if I, if I leave it at uh, quick, uh, sometimes it doesn't save the file as an SQL file. It like throws out the text like this. So I don't want that. Um, I wanna do a custom backup. I'm just gonna make sure that all of the tables are selected and then I'm gonna hit save output to file. Uh, and then from here, I'm gonna change absolutely nothing else. 
Um, I mean, you could play around with some of these options if you know what you're doing, but if you don't know what you're doing, then don't. Uh, and then hit go. Uh, so I'm gonna save the output to a file and I'm gonna call this uh, WP demo is fine. Um, so it's just naming the database the same thing that the database was actually named. Let's hit save. Um, and now that should have put another file on my desktop. So I've got all of the WordPress files backed up in a zip file. And then I've got the database backed up in an SQL file. Now what I need to do is uh, open up my live server uh, where I wanna move all these files and then upload these files uh, to my live server. Uh, so um, I've got FTP access to my live server and I'm just gonna open up my, uh, my server. So it is josiecorp.com that I wanna FTP into. Um, and I'm just going to accept my certificate, FTP into the server. And now I want to uh, send, let me just hit refresh here. Is that, okay, that's up to date. I wanna send only the zip files to the server. I'm not gonna worry about uh, uploading the SQL file because um, I'm gonna upload that a different way. Uh, so I'm gonna let this run for a few minutes and I'll get back to you as soon as all of the files have been uploaded to the server. Okay, so the files should have finished uploading by now. Let me hit uh, refresh and I can see that I've got a successful transfer down here anyways. But there we go, the files are now on the server. So I'm gonna just minimize this. Um, and uh, I've already got cPanel open. Uh, and what I wanna do now is just go over to the file manager. From the file manager, I just wanna unzip um, all of these files. So let's click on that and hit extract. Uh, if I am moving a little bit too quickly, it's because uh, I have a tutorial series on cPanel. So if you guys don't understand cPanel, you need to go back and uh, watch that series. Uh, let me go ahead and hit close. Uh, so great, I've got uh, my files already on the server, but I haven't actually um, put the database back in. So let's do that. And in order to do that, I'm going back over to cPanel, the main page. And uh, if you guys haven't already created a database, then you're gonna need to go ahead and set one up. Fortunately, I set up uh, this database in the previous tutorial. So it's already set up and ready for me to use. Uh, so what I just did um, before recording this tutorial was uh, empty the database. Um, and I did that through PHP my admin. Um, so just give PHP my admin a few seconds to load. It always takes such a long time. I don't understand why, but uh, there we go. Uh, I've got my database set up, but if I hit the expand button here, this database is empty and it is the database on the live server. Uh, so what I wanna do is import that SQL file that we made a few minutes ago. So I'm gonna hit import, browse, um, WP demo is on my desktop. So let me go ahead and open that. And uh, okay, now that that has been uh, selected, I'm just gonna hit go. Yeah, I think all the options like that are uh, by default are fine. I'm just gonna hit go and um, that is going to upload the file. So this also may take a few minutes and once it's done, um, the database should be set up. Okay, so I've got a little bit of an error here. Um, database WP demo, table structure WP Akiba common, uh, no database selected. Uh -huh. Aha, uh, so that is actually my error. Even though I'm getting all this stuff at the top, uh, the actual error is down here, no database selected. That's because I didn't click on Josic Bay, the actual database, and then hit import. Um, so MySQL or PHP, my admin, just didn't know where it was importing uh, the database. So let's try that one more time. Hopefully it will work this time. Uh, it should, <laughs> it's just gonna take a little while to load. Okay, so uh, that took a few seconds to load, but once it did, um, I got the message here which says import has been successful, 77 queries executed. So basically it imported all of uh, the tables. Um, 
hopefully because I made that mistake, you guys can kind of gauge how to look for errors in uh, MySQL. And if you do see an error, uh, if it's not immediately obvious, just try Google that error and find out what your problem is from there. Uh, but everything seems to be working for me. So now uh, I'm gonna jump back over to uh, the files and I'm gonna have to do something here. I'm gonna have to edit wp-config.php. So let me hit that and hit edit. And I'm just gonna hit edit over here again. And so what we need to do is we need to change uh, all of these uh, details. Um, I'm gonna use the code editor. Yeah, there we go, okay. <laughs> so now everything has been syntax highlighted and I can see what's a comment and what is actual PHP code. Uh, but uh, you see where it says database name? I'm gonna change this name. I'm gonna have to change the database user and the database password. Uh, so, um, if you guys don't know what your database details are, go back over to MySQL databases. And when you made your database, I mean, you should pretty much know what you called your database and you should know what your user is. I can't remember my password, to be honest, so we're probably gonna have to generate a new password. Uh, so let's just copy the database name first. And uh, let's find the file that I'm editing. Um, so database uh, name, I wanna change that to Josic Bay underscore WPDB. That is my database name. Uh, let's, sorry, this is gonna be confusing with all the tabs. Uh, these are on my local host, I guess. Uh, no, 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 no. Where is it? It is this one, okay. So database is here, files here, okay. Uh, so I've got my database name. Let me just uh, copy uh, and paste the username for the, or the user for the database and we'll put that in DB user. Uh, make sure that you're not <laughs> going over to a new line and copying and pasting unnecessary spaces like I just did. Uh, so we've got our user set up. Now we need to change the database password. Um, and uh, well, this, like I said, I cannot remember what it is, so I'm gonna scroll down to my users, WP uh, user. Are we using user or are we using, let me just check. Okay, we're using Josic Bay user. So Josic Bay user, I just need to change the password for that one. Um, let me hit uh, password generator. Um, Let's try and look for something that doesn't have too many funny symbols. I think that one is good. Copy, I have copied and saved this in a safe place. Let's hit use, change, okay, okay, hello, I'm saying okay. Okay, it's a little bit stuck uh, right now. Uh, okay, let's go back over to the editor now and hit paste. And so I've got my uh, username, my database, and uh, my password all set incorrectly. So I'm gonna hit uh, save changes. And this should allow me to go over to my new domain now, which is uh, josiecorp.com. And uh, the website should run. But we're gonna have a little bit of an issue here because if I hover over one of these links, um, just pay attention to what appears right down here in the bottom corner where the mouse is. Uh, you'll see there's a little bit of a link that shows up there. All of the links still say local host. So that one does, that one does, that one does. That is a little bit of a problem because we're on the domain josiecorp.com. So let's say for instance, my map uh, was not running. If I stop this server um, and I click on one of these links, you're gonna get this kind of a problem where you're unable to connect uh, and you've been redirected to localhost uh, about us. So let's hit back um, and figure out how to fix this issue. Now, the only way to do this uh, is to go back over to um, PHP my admin, which is open here with the databases all uh, imported. And I'm just gonna hit, click on the database and then I'm gonna hit uh, query and, oh, not query, uh, SQL, <laughs> great. Uh, so click on SQL and then you're gonna have to run a bunch of queries. Now, 
I will copy and paste these queries into the description of this video. So go ahead and check those out. Uh, but there are five queries that we need to run. We're gonna have to run them one at a time. So I'll have to do the first one first, then the next one, then the next one. Um, and to be honest, if you don't have comments or uh, you don't have pingbacks on your site at the moment, then you won't need to run uh, the bottom three. Oopsie. Uh, you won't need to run these bottom three, but you will still need to run the first three. Uh, and so uh, basically what I've done here is I've set these queries up that all you need to do is put in your old URL, which if you've been following along with me and my MAMP tutorials should be localhost uh, colon 8888, right? So you just wanna change localhost 888 to your new domain, whatever that is. In my case, it's josiecorp.com, oops. And uh, I'm just gonna remove those two for now. Uh, and when I hit go, it should change the links. So everything that said localhost should now change to josiecorp.com. The first one, the first query should affect two rows. Uh, and pretty much always should only affect two rows because we're actually targeting a certain table here. The next query kind of depends on how many times you've placed the link in your content. So if I go back to SQL and I grab the, the second query, um, this one is going to depend on how many links and how many articles you actually have on your site. So I can't tell you how many times it should run, but again, we wanna change everything that said localhost 888 to Josie corp.com. Make sure all of the spelling is correct and you don't have any typos because if you do have a typo, you're gonna break something. And let's hit go. Okay, again, only two rows affected this time. Uh, but yeah, you get the point. We're gonna have to run all of these queries. So I'm gonna run them and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm done. Um, a quick note to just remember when you guys run these queries is that uh, you some you might want to put in the www, but if you're going to do that, um, if you're going to use the www in the old URL, make sure you also use it in the new URL because it'll take whatever's in old URL and completely replace that with whatever you put in here. So if you make any dub 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 issues or if you have like any extra uh, closing slashes or anything like that. Um, it may cause problems. So just, like I said at the beginning of the video, you're gonna have to need to know what you were doing and you're gonna have to need to know how to run queries and that kind of stuff. If you don't know how to do this, again, it could cause problems. But uh, now that I've run all the queries, let's go back over to uh, the site and I'm gonna just refresh it. Hopefully I'll get all the new links and everything when uh, this loads and I'll hover over about us and again, if I check the links in the corner, it's going to josiecorp.com slash about us. So that seems to be perfect. Uh, contact us. Um, again, that was also uh, perfect. Blog posts, perfect. So all of the links on my site should now be working correctly. And that was a really complicated process, but we are done and I hope to see you guys again soon. If you liked that video, there are a bunch of things that you can do to help First of all, don't forget to subscribe, watch another one of my videos, follow me on social media, and if you wanna support the channel financially, you can also become a patron. Becoming a patron means that you're gonna choose to help me pay for some of the equipment and the software that I use to make these videos, and also, hopefully, help me finish my degree. So go ahead and click on something, and I'll see you guys next time.